Welcome back to this THG podcast, everybody. What's up, guys? It has been a little while, like what, four, four weeks, I think? I don't Three or four weeks. Know. Sorry, guys, know. it's been a minute. The first couple of weeks was because it was legitimately slow. And, you know, the new year, there's never really much going on in, in the, um, you know, gaming industry, the first couple of year, first couple weeks of the year. And we just didn't want to just be literally just sitting here staring at each other saying, you know, who knows what, you know. So, um, but we're back here. More we than we some, already do. Yes. But we got some things to talk about today. But first things first, some housekeeping. Yes, I almost said house clearing. <laughs> some housekeeping. Uh, so for those who know, we really put out a new video, Gran Turismo Sport Platinum video. Um, mostly, mostly done by myself and a editor friend that I have. Mostly all I was not involved uh, in this. No, in, in the sense, in the sense of like I had an editor friend outside of like I didn't do the editing. That's what I'm trying to say. Like yeah, I didn't yeah, mean yeah. by you, you know, you yeah, he didn't do shit. But um, no. uh, but yeah, was, well, narrated by me, created by me, and all that stuff. I had a good editor friend who who did all that editing magic. Um, thank you for the for the like reception of that video uh david's seen it i've seen it we talked about it a little bit yeah. uh holy high hell this is the first video we've had of this like that's done this level of success for the channel that isn't clickbait by accident <laughs> <laughs> uh we've had a few uh clickbait videos by mistake uh some of you were a part of david um yeah, I, there didn't, was, I uh, didn't know. Was, there was an uh, old Ratchet and Clank video that we did uh, for the ride. back when David used to lived in still lived in Washington, like our first year of the of the channel where we played the first Ratchet and Clank game, uh, which is a traditional let's play with the two of us. And at some point, you locked this device called a Persuader, and I kind of lost. I kind of forgot what it did, and so I just titled the video like "What does the Persuader do?" Just we didn't know, <laughs> and then that video has like, if not several hundred, it, like a thousand or so views. Just because that question, I made a question out of the video and that like worked with the algorithm. People were like thinking like, oh yeah, what does it do? It gives you a discount off of the, the Gadgetron vendors. That's what it does. <laughs> like that's actually what it does. And it took a but, long time just to answer that one. But I forgot what it did questions. and then boom, there you go. And then uh, there was another, the one video that we still get views on today was with Travis on the, uh, an old PS3 game called Pure um, that I've talked about on other podcasts with other people before. But um uh we i titled the video looking for looking for multiplayer or looking for co-op the game doesn't have any it was never it never had any there's no it's not secret and not hidden there's just none but i didn't know that so and the copy we had was the old gamestop use cases you know mm -hmm. the old gamestop use case that doesn't have any box art so you know i don't know like if it was the original box art it would tell me one player you're like oh okay but i didn't know that and it had been a year since I played it. And so I thought maybe we had to get through the you know, the tutorial or whatever. Nope, just not in there. But I titled the video looking for multiplayer. Or no, looking for split screen. And again, people thought I found it. And that's why it gets like a few views even to this day. <laughs> so I probably need to delete those. But um, this is the first time we had a video that actually like was not, it was not clickbait. It was, it was, it was not, you know, trying to trick anyone or, you know, what, what you... What, what the title says on the video is, you know, it's, it's on the tin. Like, it is, it is exactly what it's supposed to be. And uh, as of today, the 28th, um, this morning or this afternoon, 2 1. It, it was actually a 2.3-ish um, mm -hmm. uh, today at the 28th. And, um, you know, it's brought in more subs from one video than anything else has. K, and, not yeah. M. It, just to, oh yes 2.3k <laughs> sorry oh gosh yes 2.3k not 2.3 million goodness gracious i mean insane sorry we're not we're not mr beast we, we don't we, we're not pulling that right now um but yeah we're most of our videos do you know we're, we're happy to if a video hits like over 50, a couple hundred let yeah, alone yeah, a couple that, hundred, yeah yeah i mean 50, you know yeah. th this is pretty phenomenal so just for those who have been asking in the comments or me personally um this is not a one-off thing now i wasn't sure what would it be because i didn't know what was going to happen but given how this worked this will not be a one-off um i will be working on uh i will like look at you know look at some other games that i think would be would be well to do this for and you know if it, if it continues to do well then that will be a main part of the channel going forward um, but the reason why i haven't yet is a good way to lead into the first segment of what we're playing uh snazzy little in you know little segue there uh i have mainly been playing the crew 
the old racing game on the PS4 Xbox One from 2014, uh, which surprisingly, well, strangely, it has a 360 port, but there's no PS3 port. And it was the funniest thing. Um, and and there's actually a reason why. There is a reason why. I looked it up one day. I don't remember what it was. But um, it was just something, something was preventing Ubisoft from being able to do a PS3 port. But they did one for 360. But it was the funny. But anyways, the game was an online only game. It was definitely a game like well, I was kind of one of the early adopters of that idea. The, the online only thing. Yeah. It's like an MMO racing game. Um, it's kind of like what need for speed world wanted to be that that ill-fated need for speed game that wanted to do the exact same thing i mean crew is not exactly um, not ill-fated either okay hear me out <laughs> <laughs> so i thought the same thing too because i'm i'm well aware that the reviews for that game at launch were mediocre at best right um and i don't i mean it, it got a lot of support before the second game came out it had like two major expansions a bunch of it had, his entire ui got yeah, changed I mean, yeah. I didn't even know that because I've been watching some videos to look up some trophies and stuff like that. And the videos are really old, of course. But the UI got entirely changed. The UI that I'm using is not the same one that the game launched with. And I've, it's not often where an entire UI gets changed. Yeah. And so um, they, they worked on that game a long time. And I think it shows because I, I'm actually kind of impressed in some, uh, in some aspects, at least especially on a technical feature. Because it is supposed to be, you know, the whole U.S., the entire u.s map um and you can fast travel from one side of the u.s to the other and it only takes at most like maybe 10 seconds you know to, to load up the entire locale of the entire part of the country yeah in like 10 seconds now it's not like an ssd style if it was ssd that'd be insane but like with the fact that it doesn't have one and it's supposed to load up literally the entire country you know at any at any given point and you know us u.s people don't realize this but the more you talk to other people outside of the U.S., you realize that like the U.S. is huge. <laughs> the like you, you probably you know you're 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 a history teacher and all that stuff, but like yeah, a lot yeah, of us, indeed. a lot of Americans don't understand that the U.S. is gigantic as far as like a whole country is concerned. You know, they say yeah. that the size of the state of Texas alone is bigger than a lot of European countries by themselves. So the fact that it was able to it could load up any part of the U.S. map in no more than like ten seconds is quite impressive especially for 2014 as like a damn near launch game for those yeah. for that generation of consoles yeah. so i'm impressed in that aspect i think they do i think because you talked a little bit about need for speed payback and how it had like that card thing it was able to like have these different stats for the different cars mm. this game kind of has some features that makes me think of that now i haven't played payback yet so i couldn't say for sure but it makes me think of what you used to say about that game because it kind of adopts a certain style because you need to have you need to have a car of five different specs. Well, in the base game, they added three more with expansions, but in the base game, there's five different specs outside of the full stock. And you can have any car, you can have one car be every spec if it if it has that spec a lot unlocked for it. Like not every car can have every spec, but like for instance, the 350Z can have every spec. So you could just have that one car, buy that one car, and just pay for the different specs and then just keep using that car forever. Or there are better cars for better specs, which is what I'm doing. But um, you have to do that. And like certain races, well, there's always a specific spec car that you need for each race or each mission. And so it makes me think of that. And if you think like, I, I bet you they adopted some of that into payback. Because it has like, because like that stat status and everything, it kind of reminds me of an RPG for cars. Mm. It's kind of weird. Yeah. It's kind of cool. Because yeah. like in the sense, because like you can break the game like a like a lot of rpgs early on because the game allows you to do all these other types of missions that aren't outside of like story or whatever and they're not particularly hard but everything you do gives you like a new part for your car on the car that you were using and so if you just keep using this this one car like a street spec car for a good while just do these other miscellaneous stuff you can get your car up to like close to max rank which is like around 1450 to 1500 in like maybe an hour but the story missions will always like require so much less to, to like to like you know to have like a you know to be competitive or whatever like the bare minimum that you need for each mission. So mm. I'm going in. I'm doing like the last end game missions, like the last few missions, and it's still telling me is like the difficulty is easy because my car is so over leveled from what the recommended level is supposed to be, and so. It, it's funny in that way because I've never played a car RPG, and the more I'm thinking about this, I'm just like I kind of like it. Like it's just because it's, it's so different. And with me yep. being a car fan, 
it's like it's kind of cool like that you can do all this now there's no builds per se like you're not going to be like mixing min and max and your exhausts and your and your you know your your engines and your brakes and everything because it do, they adopted this system called smart loot so like it gives you like the best loot that you could get or something like that no when you win something you can apply it and it only like it, it, it already does like all that min maxing i think for you in the background or whatever so you don't have to worry about all that um by the way it, it's a fun game it frustrates me in some in some aspects but that's because i realized that it was some of the some of these little side thingies that i was doing needed a spec that i didn't realize was from a dlc expansion because it doesn't tell you that and so i was using a different car that i thought it was for and i was like what the fuck? i was like oh i was i would lose my mind and i was like oh it's from a spec i don't have okay <laughs> so it, it, i was like all right um but uh yeah I'm, try, I'm trying to get this game but the thing reason why i bring up this game of why i haven't done any other platinum videos or i'm not working on it yet is because the servers for this game are shutting down soon as well just like gt sports was they shut down at the end of march and there's a good handful of online trophy well multiplayer trophies i should say since everything's technically online and it's just a little you know trying to get you know different people together to do some of these and there's like like an mmo there's no raid missions but it has their equivalent and they're called faction missions and they vary in in like in length and you can do you can do all of them by yourself or you can do all of them with people in your crew from two to four people but there's two trophies that require you to do two specific missions which are very long and you need to have at least one person with you one of them i was able to do today which takes like 45 minutes the other one takes like four hours and so <laughs> it's just like first of all you need to make sure you have the time then you can make sure that someone has, also has the time and then you got to make sure you, then you got to actually sit down and do it for four hours um so it's 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 you know it's a bit rough and then there's like other things like we got to do like 50 of these like online pvp things with another crew which you as long as you have like people four people in your group and you go together they'll just split you guys up so that's not as bad but it's just like getting that four hour thing that because like the other stuff you can do piecemeal but you can't piecemeal a four hour mission so you got to yeah. start it from start to finish so that's a bit of a struggle but you know i got to the end of march and obviously a lot of people are now you know coming in coming in droves because of that a lot of people want to try and get the, want to try and get the platinum so you know a lot of people are, are like adding me and stuff like that so i'm pretty sure i'll get it but it's just like you know i i gotta i i'm i gotta make sure i'm focused on this because i don't want to fuck up because there's also two glitch trophies that have fucked up a lot of people not every it's not like a glitch for everyone but it does it has reported a lot of people have reported that it's glitched for them and their trophies that take a long time and so it's like i gotta make sure i can get i can try to get them sooner than later because if it does glitch for me there have been instances where ubisoft will reset your stats if you contact them and then you might have another chance to try it again so you know it's just but i don't even know if it'll glitch on me yet uh, you best, yeah. be, best believe i'm praying to jesus upstairs man to make sure like to save my save file <laughs> save my profile man make sure i don't get screwed over um but yeah that's what i've been playing most uh, pretty much all my time if i'm not playing the rocker for like an hour i am playing the crew that's it uh David, what have you been playing that isn't Baldur's Gate 3 because you have no time for that? Yeah, well, unlike RJ, I actually, you know, got my pulse on on what's hot in the industry. <laughs> I don't play fucking 20-year-old games. What are you talking about, man? The crew is super... I mean, crew... The the. I mean, okay, maybe not the crew I'm playing, but the crew series is so relevant. They had Motorsport last year, so you know. Oh, yeah? It's kind of... It, no, it, it, <laughs> no one knows about motorsports. Ah, we talk about it's, it's, it's oh, good. Man. It's good. It's no it's knows. like the cruise version of uh, Motorstorm. Anyway, anyway, I'm I've been playing Pal World for the last two days, um, and I mean there there's a lot more we could get into it. It might deserve its own separate video um, or topic uh, on an, in another video later. But uh, I'll just hit a few things. One, I enjoy it um i enjoy survival base building games uh by themselves i enjoy uh how do i want to not copyright infringe this i enjoy uh creature catching creature catchers there you go thank you um by themselves especially the uh the main creature catcher um so it's good. It works on on that. It it definitely is early access, and because I play on the Xbox, um, from what I understand, it's the most early access of yeah. all the early access ones. Yeah, it's inferior uh, version Steam. for sure. 
yeah, I hear Steam gets uh, updated a lot more. That being said, it's only crashed on me one time, um, which, which I don't know if it like did this as it was crashing because it has it has really good save, um, save points. Like it, it saves regularly. Okay. Um, and it also saves whenever you return to the main menu. So I don't know when it was crashing if that like triggered the save or not because it, I I went back in. I was expecting to lose like a whole day, um, but it put me right where I was when the game crashed. So that was cool. Um, but yeah, the, the mons or the pals are, are cool. Um, yes, they are very, very reminiscent of, of Pokemon's mons. But I mean, fuck, so was Pokemon's original generation based off of... Uh, um, I don't think it was Final Fantasy's monsters. It was the ones with the, the one with the little like blue dot. Dragon Quest? Right, Dra- Dra- Dragon Quest. A lot of... If you look at Dragon Quest, it might be Final Fantasy, but I think it's Dragon Quest. If you look at a lot of the monsters from them and compare them to the first gen Pokemons, especially the first art of the first gen Pokemons, they're like the same things too. Hmm. Um, but yes, they they are obviously inspired, but so has you know, so has Digimon was inspired, uh, ran- uh, Monster Rancher, a whole bunch of manga uh anime and games have been inspired by pokemon yes they may be a little bit more in this case than others um but that being said uh that's where the like like other than you know you catch them with these little pal spheres or whatever um but other than that no gameplay is particularly similar uh i guess you would say it's most similar to arceus um which as we've talked about on other shows was my is still one of my favorite pokemon games it pretty much goes like uh og through gold heart gold are my favorite pokemon games and then arceus and then all the other ones can kind of like you know come come or go i don't really care about them because they haven't this is made anything better this is definitely your your favorite modern pokemon game Yes. And especially Mo- your favorite Switch generation, like your Switch era Pokemon. Game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely my maybe even 3DS. Um no, definitely 3DS. Like this is this is the best creature catcher game I've played and I've I've I haven't even made it past the first boss because again, there's so much more to it. Mm-hmm. than creature catching cuz I'm building my base, I'm upgrading my base, I'm getting I'm about to get my first gun uh, and you know, that kind of shit. And it is just fun. It's addictive. Yeah, yeah. And the crazy thing is, is there's no fucking storyline. Like, really? and there could be, yeah, there, really? there's like, there's, there's definitely like hmm. elements of it. Cause you have these like poacher people who have like guns and who like, you know, like poach Pokemon and kill Pokemon for their, for their stuff. All right. Sorry, pals. Fucking. Yeah. You, you um, wanted to avoid copyright. But then here you go it. saying like like that's the seven it, times. Any, <laughs> anyway, so I don't care. But they're they're going around. They're team rocketing shit. Team rocketing. Like if, <laughs> but if like Team Rocket was actual bad guys, actually who competent, actually did, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, co- well, like who actually just did messed up shit. Like they are like I went into one base and they had a mon like in a cage and and then I I found him a couple different times just slaughtering you know mons with guns and harvesting their Jeez. their you know skins and stuff like that like it's it's yeah like it's brutal so like there's definitely elements of a story that could be written um but i'm having this much fun basically with no storyline um just going around capturing mons uh and they're helping me uh helping me at yeah. my at my base uh cuz because they like to work for me. Uh, <laughs> but I will say, okay, so one of the things I want to touch on is is this kind of, con- the other controversy of like, essentially, they're slaves. Slave and labor. you're making them do slave labor. <laughs> but that is, so like, if you think about it though, if we were to have Pokemon or Mons in this world, in our real world, we would be having them do shit for us just like we have domesticated animals for our entire uh existence on this earth to do work for us we have we've had 
you know, horses and cattle drag, uh, you know, drag our fields. We've had them turn mills. We've had them do all sorts of stuff. It's the same thing. It is a little bit weird just because I think because we're, we're putting the Pokemon on the pals like that, that are thinking of Pokemon as like, Oh, there are friends and companions and buddies and all that sort of stuff. And like, it's weird, you know, you know, taking Pikachu and being like, Hey buddy, I kind of need your electric gland now. So I'm going to take this butcher knife and butcher you now um, <laughs> and dig out your electric gland. Cause I kind of need it for my machine that I'm building. Like, yeah, it's it, there. It's a little weird. It's a little creepy. It's a little brutal. But if you think about it, it's realistic. Like that's what we would be doing if they were in real life. It's what we've been doing to you know animals and stuff. And you know, hey, if you're you know if you're PETA or or you know that have the same mind as PETA that we shouldn't be using animals for that. Cool. I don't agree. Um. Uh, mainly because without that we wouldn't be having this conversation today um because we want to have anything that we have today without um our use of animals but yeah uh i i don't think i think it's being blown out of proportion i will say the last thing i'll say on it is that if pokemon does go after pal world and it gets shut down I will be disappointed because I would like to see where it goes. And as we've talked about before, competition is good for pushing people. Pokemon needs to take shit from Power World. Like, hardcore. Mm -hmm. Like, the use, just, just the fucking use of Unreal Engine. Like, use Unreal Engine. It's a good engine. It looks good. Like, this game in, in early access has been out for fucking a, a month, month or something like that. Maybe looks better looks, than any pokemon game i've ever seen in the 3d since we since we moved to 3d and since really like the original hand-drawn sprites I because that's say, kind of like a different art i would say it looks as good but that's still a compliment on power because it like it just came out it's yeah. early access the, and it, it does the not textures have, it has okay i'm just going by the monsters i guess like the screenshots that i've seen because I, I can't play it the but, monsters look better but like the monsters look better the overall graphics that i've seen from pictures yeah. like it looks at least as good but yeah. that's still crazy when you consider like this is a you know i don't know how big the studio is but it, there's no way they have the, the money and the resources that game freak does and for yeah. it to look as good at the bare minimum is a problem like that should not be the case <laughs> yeah like, and, and and it's so much like so uh outside xbox has a thing where they talk about like what they want po game freak to take from power world mm -hmm. and like implement it which i agree with everything they say one of the main things they said is that the world is so interactive like i'll be walking around and all of a sudden i'll see two groups of po of, mo of pals like duking it out for some reason like they're just attacking each other because they got into a turf war so yeah. i don't know but they're over there attacking each other and even in arceus they all have their areas but all the pokemon they stay separate from each other like you don't even have like intermingling like they're not even in the same area because they don't spawn in the same area mm. but in this you have all these different pals spawning in in the same area sometimes they get into fights and it's just really cool um and so yeah I, I like so to close it off i'm enjoying it uh I, I want it to continue i think it would be really cool to have a kind of mature more mature pokemon and i don't think regardless of how popular power world gets that it, it's not pokemon game freak isn't going to take the mature elements of power world and implement in the pokemon but i think they need to take the gameplay elements yeah gameplay um, game world i think is yeah. what would make more because like okay honestly i don't want pokemon with the have guns all of a sudden i don't i don't really want yeah, it i don't yeah. care for or it like, butchering like yeah, i don't I, want to butcher that's fine. Pikachu. Like, i don't i don't really go to pokemon for that but as far as things like making the world actually feel lived in that would be like that's something everyone would like and you don't need to be mature to do that right because no. you have other games that are have a more kid-friendly tone that have way more world building the Pokemon's trying to do. Um, here's the thing. So I know you said you don't want to talk about more anymore, but we're going to because we're going to talk about whether they actually have a case 
to take down Power World. That's why I wanted us to talk a little bit about. Um, oh, does Nintendo? Yes, does Nintendo slap? Well, it's just. Well, Nintendo. I mean, we're not legal. We're not, but we can speculate, and that's what podcasts are all about. <laughs> um, so here's the thing: what I keep thinking about, right, is like you mentioned earlier, like the biggest. The biggest thing was like back in the day for those who were old enough to know was Digimon, right? Like that was that was the biggest competition. It was still a far second to number two, but it was the, the next biggest thing. And it's still going on today, right? Like I don't know if Nintendo ever did try suing in the 90s, probably, but you know, we were too young to know. But they never succeeded. The, the Digimon is still as it is today, and they had plenty of games going out concurrently with pokemon right and so what i wonder is primarily the reason why they couldn't and why i think maybe power World will be able will be okay is like yes there's like the evolution aspect yes there's the creature catching aspect and maybe some of the designs well there's no evolution in power World. no it, with, sorry with, with digimon but like um, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, but like digimon's entire you know back to the gameplay game you know all that stuff was different it was different yeah. in a lot of ways um and like the way you interacted with the world was entirely different like a lot of like, and also digimon's games kind of all went all over the place but back in the day i think the biggest one back in the day was digimon world those those series of games on playstation and maybe some other consoles but those games played like final fantasy like old school final fantasy games and i only know this because my brother played but he's never beaten digimon world 3 but he has probably played that game seven thousand times and i don't know he's never he still has never beaten it and i don't know why he can't beat it but um anyways i've seen that gameplay and like it, it's in, it's like fundamentally different in a lot of ways than pokemon or like at least how you go about the world how you go about traversal it's just it's just it's different enough and when, when we think about you know legality you know building a case like actually like do you have a case they're probably going to be like you know can you fund them can you wholeheartedly fundamentally say that you know for instance digimon back in the 90s is the same or a sim similar enough to pokemon that it is infringing on a copyright or trademark or whatever like that right and if they did try suing they couldn't get away with it because digimon's still around but then you look at power world and if they were trying if they were to sue they, they have to come they have to come with the same conclusion does Power World have enough in it that either makes you immediately like think like this is a copycat of Pokemon, or there's enough in it that makes you think it's a copycat of Pokemon? And on when you go back to the mentioned the gameplay and like all these different things that it does with this world, it's a survival game at its at its core. You know, it's not a creature catching game at its core. It's a survival game, and it uses the creature catching as a means to do the survival aspects of that game. And it's, you know, look at that and you look about what you do with the creatures and like it's not just battling. And even if it is battling, what they do is entirely different. You know, you have the guns and then you have all these other crazy macabre things, you know, that are baked into it. And it's it's like. I think beyond the creatures, there's no similarity to Pokemon. Yeah, I think I think what it'll come down to is did they so like i think i think the only thing that'll that'll really take down pal world even temporarily is did they actually use assets from pokemon in some regard like did they use physical assets mm -hmm. not did they copy or whatever because it's pretty clear that it's heavily inspired um that's the only thing is is did they use actual assets um i think that there could be some like you know, hey, for, from Game Freak, to, hey, you need to change these models and get them less looking like our product, mm -hmm. or we're going to at least tie you up in legal fees, and yeah. we have more money than you. Yeah. <laughs> so they could they could do that. Yeah. Um. But then again, I think that we would just see you know some enough changing that it's that it's enough, mm -hmm. and then they'll just be back on the boat. Uh, I I don't think that'll be taken down. I don't think that it should, but I don't think that yeah, I don't even think that there's a really a case for it. Yeah, um, like that's the problem. At, that's what it gets. And to. especially just because, and, and other people have pointed this out, is that that Game Freak didn't respond to this at first. No, like they, they knew no. they knew that this no. game was coming out. That it got big hype. It sold thirty you know million copies or whatever. And then it wasn't until you know a whole bunch of you know Pokemon stands were like you have to do something and then they're like hey we're, we're looking into it like you and, know yeah, and yeah. Was, that's all they said too it was yeah. the most like i saw the article in pokemon made a world response and like we are aware of it we are investigating it it seemed like the most lackluster yeah like, I, low, I think it was like, just to 
to appease the fans that, hey, you know, because again, like, again, it doesn't look good for Game Freak because you do have this company that just, you know, release its first game and it's already doing a bunch of shit better than you. Um, so I think that they need to address it. And I think what it would, would be smarter for, for Game Freak is to is to do what people are accusing Power World to do and just fucking rip the shit off of Power World and put everything that's good about Power World, you know, minus the guns and the, the, the butchering of Pokemon, yeah, yeah. Uh, of pals, and put it in the next Pokemon game. Scrap whatever the fuck you're doing. I, I wouldn't even care if it, if it if it took longer for the next Pokemon to game out. You, I think the best business decision for them to do is to scrap whatever Pokemon game they're working on, and and just start over and and do a Pal World Pokemon game, or even buy King the company that that made Pal World. They have the money to do it. I'm sure. I wouldn't be surprised if they just either poached it post people from the that that studio yeah. or bought it outright yeah just buy it outright and say hey you know we we you know, they they have a rich history of offshoot games technically rcs is an offshoot game just buy the company and did have them make an offshoot pokemon game you know like, uh, that, yeah, that's like, what we that's might... what we thought rcs was gonna do and then they kind of just fucking smashed rcs and the normal pokemon games together yeah. until you just had two wrecked cars kind of just mangled together and that's what scarlet, scarlet Violet was Art. yeah it, it, scarlet it, and Violet. you know that that idea of them buying them and making them like this a subsidiary company it like that's worked before with other companies when ea bought criterion i think it's, i think they're criterion the burnout guys and then, um for a little while yeah. they were like the guys who were making the good need for speed games uh, they mm-hmm. had made the Hot Pursuit remake. Uh, the Need for sorry, yeah, Hot Pursuit remake was really well received, and then the um, okay, the most wanted one, not so much. But um, for a period of time, they were making the good ones. Like they have they, their internal teams sucked, but then when Criterion's turn came up, it was like yeah, you know, we're fucking killing it. And then there was another one, uh, you know, Bethesda, you know, Obsidian, you know. I mean, yes, yeah. that's like a it's part of the franchise, but like it, you can look at it new vegas like it's not a numbered game right but like people look at obsidians you know crack at it as the better version i mean i think you're one of them you know so it's like for sure it's worked before where they bought in other people to make a game in that same vein but just like a different i guess idea of it and that could happen and i bet you if they just let that studio do what it wants to do within the pokemon dna they probably would make the next you know the next arceus you know but even better because yeah, yeah, like, sure. like you, I remember you saying like with Arceus and then going from Arceus to, I think the next one technically was Brilliant Diamond and then they were yeah. Scarlet Violet. But like it was like we went from Arceus and we we're like, oh yeah, we're actually seeing some innovation here. And then it was like, wait, why are we going backwards, guys? <laughs> why do we yeah. go back? We were doing so like, good yeah. with Arceus. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but it, and it's, I didn't think about this, but yeah, I didn't never really thought about the fact that, that Game Freak isn't using Unreal. Because it's like if they did, that probably would it would probably finally make Pokemon look like how we thought Pokemon was gonna look when yeah, the Switch it, came out. And it does away with all of the problems that they had with Scarlet and Violet when it first launched, of it just being shitty. And so was that was that part of the problem? Was just the engine itself? Yeah, the engine just couldn't couldn't take what they were trying to do with it, making really? it open world. I, and stuff. I didn't hear they about just, that. Okay. Yeah, so there was some stuff that came out where the team just wasn't used to uh, whatever engine they used. It wasn't that they obviously weren't using the same engine. Um, I think they were using borrowed tech from around Nintendo, but it just wasn't. They weren't the team wasn't used to it, and they couldn't get it to run right. And the the sprites that they were using um, because they were assets from the other games mm-hmm. weren't like translating correctly. Mm. Um, but yeah, so I I think they just need to make the switch to Unreal. Dang it, they got the um, same problem Bethesda does with the fucking creation engine. <laughs> yeah. God damn it! Um, and I, you know, yeah. but you know, Nintendo. I don't think Nintendo any of the first party games uses Unreal or Unity. No. I think it's all custom. I don't think uh, Mario, uh, Zelda, Metroid. I don't think any of Splatoon. I don't think any of them use any public public made engines. But then again, I mean, a lot of other companies don't either. Insomniac doesn't either. They have their own in house. You know, Resident Evil has their own as well. Um, so it's not like it. It's not like it, it can't be done well because a lot of studios do make their own in house engines. Oh, yeah. 
but it looks you, but if, like, but if use it breaks, unreal or something like it but if it know? breaks like this then it's like okay well obviously what you are using isn't working so yeah. um okay that's that's interesting to know but yeah it, it's it's i don't i don't think they can at least shut down this game at the bare minimum i don't think yeah. this game will get shut down i think what what you're saying is probably what would might more like because there's some pokemon who some pokemon some pals that do look a lot like i I saw one and I was like, that is straight up a Motham from Gen 4. That is straight up a Motham. And so I think I think at the bare minimum be like, yeah, you just gotta you gotta change some of these. Cause you yeah. just and maybe they will, maybe preemptively. I think that'd be smart for the studio. Like maybe preemptively change some of the ones that are a little bit too on the nose. So it gives Nintendo even less of a case to make um against them. Because yeah, they probably don't want to go to court even for a little bit. <laughs> so um yeah. I would probably do that if I was like heading the studio i'll be like okay all right boys we got to change at least 10 of these because these are <laughs> these are too much these are too much yeah. looking like pokemon um i, I mean like great inspiration guys but we got to change these so but everything else i just i just see so much of it i'm just like and the fact that they took the game and made it a survival game at its core i think was the smartest thing for it to do because pokemon does not is not a survival game i don't know if there's any weird spinoffs that are but like most of them are not survival games and so i think because that it's its entire core gameplay loop isn't you know isn't what pokemon's is about i think it's like i, I think that alone makes it to where it, like i don't know how nintendo can build a proper case you know and unless yeah. they're strong arming the entire core which they could do but like it's just it's just i just don't i don't see it but um yeah so well, fingers crossed because like you said and like we've said before nintendo uh, competition is needed in pokemon I mean, as much as we love it, it 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 has been on top for too long, and it needs yep. someone to take at least show it up in some regard. You know, just how how like I keep I'm getting more and more upset with Sony, and Xbox needs to step their game up hard. Mm-hmm. And I hope that they do, especially with this recent Xbox showcase. I'm hoping that yep. th- those games that they came out that are coming out this year, I hope they all do phenomenal and scare Sony because they are doing some stupid shit. So yeah, and I didn't realize that Pokemon game freak or whoever like there's been a pokemon game like every i didn't know they had a yearly release now granted it's not a it's not a standalone game it's not sorry it's not like the yeah. main main line but there's a pokemon game like every year and i was like yeah. I, I never even realized that and i was just like why like i didn't i had no idea it was so low-key to me i was like you guys are straight you guys have been doing the codic formula and i had no idea this whole time but then i was like wow it really is and i and i think that's part of the problem too like that's why we're not seeing any dividends from the Pokemon games because it's just it's just how can you innovate? You know, just just like with COD, just like with any sports game, just like Need for Speed for a good few, you know, good while, Assassin's Creed for a good while. How can you have real iteration when you have a game every single year? You just can't. You can't. Yeah. You, you that curve, innovation curve will eventually cap out. <laughs> it, it caps out eventually. It, it, just, it, it accelerates fast at the beginning, but it eventually caps out. But anyways. Last thing to talk about. Did you see? Uh, did you hear about Ubisoft? No. So recently, after the um, after the Prince of Persia 2D game came out, which has done well, which is great because I'm hoping that they'll do more because I want 2008 Prince of Persia to get ported over. But um, uh, some exec from Ubisoft said that we as consumers need to get used, need to get used to not owning our games anymore. Did you hear about this? No, it doesn't surprise me. I mean, okay, I'm not saying this to stir shit with things. you because I know you were you. I read that I was like, oh, where's David? Where's David? Because uh, he he be right behind my shoulder to be like, I told you, <laughs> but <laughs> I've been telling you for years. <laughs> but anyways, but we actually had someone actually out and say it. So obviously, this is gonna stir up a lot of shit amongst everybody else. But one of us talk about it. Yeah, uh, thoughts, so, so I mean, we we've talked about this kind of stuff in in the past. Um, I don't like it, but like it's it's I, I said this before. It's going to happen. It's gonna happen eventually. There's nothing we as consumers can do to stop it, um, because we're going to continue to buy the games, or I should say, buy the rights to play the games. <laughs> We're con- we're going to continue to give these companies money, um, because we love to play their games, 
Um, I think that the hardest part for me, and I think for you too, is just the conservation of, of those games. I think if they could give us any kind of reassurance that, hey, once you purchase the rights to play these games, the, the rights are yours. And, and we're not going to pull them off servers like tapping to the to crew and, and to Gran Turismo. Um, that I'd be, I'd be fine with it. Like, again, it's kind of weird that like I don't technically own the thing that I paid $60 for. But you don't own the thing. You don't own most of your media consumption anyway now. You don't own CDs anymore. No one buys CDs anymore. No one buys albums. You have Spotify. You have iTunes Play. You have whatever other services you use. Most people don't buy albums anymore. You know, so you haven't owned albums in forever. You've never owned shows other than if you bought them on DVD. Um, but even that is less so because you don't, you know, we're streaming now almost exclusively. Um, you know, we don't own movies anymore. You're just buying the rights to those movies on platforms. You know, if you buy something off Vudu, you don't own that movie. You own the right to view it on Vudu or Amazon Prime or whatever. And if they ever just, if that company ever went under or they pulled that or lost the rights to the, to stream that movie on Vudu, you just wouldn't be able to watch it anymore. Um, so that is just the realist in me. Um, that it's i think it's just inevitable um and yeah i don't know if i have much else to say about it just that it's it's inevitable it's going to happen it it's not great but like that's just the capitalism <laughs> you know? like it's just the advancement of capitalism capitalism it's, i don't know what to tell you guys <laughs> i know like you know we we used to we used to you know we used to own you know, land and farms and used to farm for ourselves and, and make, you know, and substance farming was, was the way of the world. And now it's not anymore. No one substance farms anymore. We cash crop farm now, you know, you grow things to sell them. You don't grow them to eat them. Um, and it's the same kind of thing. It's just as technology advances, the individual owns less and less. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's dystopian books about a future where you don't own, you know, there's, there's dystopian books about you don't own it yourself. Uh, that's a little far, but something that I could see eventually is you not owning clothes that you, that you buy the rights to wear clothes, um, the brands that you want to wear, stuff like that. Um, but it's just the, the march of capitalism, um, they want to find ways to be more and more profitable. Um, and they're going to, uh, it, it's, it's either this or another way. So I'll stop rambling. I got two things. One, I think the reason why this, you hear more pushback on games and it could be because we were, we weren't as deep. Like I'm sure there was people who were upset with iTunes back in 07 or whatever. I'm sure oh, there, there definitely I'm, was. I'm yeah. sure there was. Yeah. I mean, well, we mostly heard it from the musicians more so from the consumers. Right? Yeah, it was sure. more the musicians that were pissed. Um, but we as people, I'm sure we did, but like, yeah, I don't know. And movies, when that started becoming a thing and the streaming, consumers were happy with streaming. I mean, we were we were pumped with that. We were like, wait. It's kind of circling shows? back around. All the shows? But yeah. Um, well, I, think, I, think, I think because it's getting too out of hand and there's just too much now. But like before, like in the 2010s, it was like, this was like revolution, you know? Yeah. Um, Gaming, I think, is the I think the biggest reason why it's 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 you get so much pushback from the consumers is because it's the most expensive media there is, on a like a per per purchase basis, you know. Yeah, per purchase. Yeah. A, a, a song, three dollars, two dollars. A CD, thirteen dollars. Right. A movie, depending if you get the special edition or what, twenty bucks. Right. Games, sixty. Now seventy. And it's and as we talked about before, it probably should and it or could, could be more. go into it the could 80, go to 90s, eighty. If you know next generation, it could be eighty. Who knows, right? Yeah. That is thing is the biggest reason because it's like we're at any media, common media that you can buy. Gaming is buy is three times as expensive than any than the next cheapest one, and so it's like it 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 hurts harder 
and it's it's more impactful to us when we lose the rights to something we put that much money towards. You know, for a lot of people, they only buy a game a year or a few games a year because of how expensive it is. You know, or like it's it's a huge detriment out of their out of their income to buy a brand new game. Now, of course, you can always wait, but a lot of people want to play a game like right when it's out, mm-hmm. and and and. It, that's why it hurts harder and that's why i think you get so much pushback when it comes to ownership with gaming in particular yeah. um and so that's one first thing i want to say the same thing i want to say is that i if, if we get to that dystopian future that we all fear one day not with the game not with the clothes but with gaming if if that executive like is legit like we're not gonna own anything and if, for gaming that is you know what I can see happening is the only the only games that will be physical, if you know whatever, is is honestly the biggest games, the, the biggest games that are currently out. Like Call of Duty probably will be Madden, FIFA, and then maybe like the newest edition of Fortnite, right? But like yeah. that's it. Well, I mean Fortnite's not physical. Fortnite hasn't been physical. No, for there's, there's there's physical releases. You can look them up. There'll be like a special edition that has like a bunch of V bucks and stuff like that into it, like whatever. But no, they they put well, out. They put yeah, out physical they'll be, copies. Yeah, they'll be like, like, yeah, the no, ones no, that you no, can like, go to GameStop go to, and buy. But go like to eBay. Disc. Go to eBay. You will find a physical copy with a disc inside of it. Because I mean, I was when I was at GameStop, there was physical copies that we would like sell, like with a case and everything. But inside of them was just codes for the whatever special event V Bucks and costume was in it. There was no right. disc. There hasn't been a disc since Save the World. All right. Well, then there was still a disc. <laughs> <laughs> but back to the original one yeah. uh, still a those disc. things sell for you know, and they sell like hot cakes even but i will say <laughs> i'll say this too and 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 I'm not it's it's more known now but it i'm guessing that a lot of people don't know even today if you go and you buy call of duty on disc you'll find a little disclaimer in there that says that you don't actually own that disc that you just own the right to use the disc. You don't technically own it. Now, again, it through legal stuff, it, it's never really held up. But they've been doing that forever. So you can legally, like the the legal the legalese behind it, still allows you to like sell and 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 give away that physical disc. But you actually don't own that disc it's it's some legalese shit but essentially they've been doing this forever hmm. they've been doing this since since the 360 and ps3 era well that sounds like a lot of muddying waters to try to get through so i'm not even going to acknowledge that but uh i was also going to say is that if if again with if, if we get to this point they have to lower these prices because it is there is there is absolutely no reason why it should be 60 bucks 70 bucks when you have lo- when you have cut so much costs out of production and warehousing and shipping cuz those are usually for someone who who works in a an industry now where shipping is such a huge cost if you cut that your margins yeah. improve so much when shipping, you can, shipping when you can and housing, cut shipping yeah shipping and warehousing is a huge cost yeah i don't think they will i'm not um, saying they sh- i'm not okay but i'm just saying that they it's going to get insane because if, if us gamers are already passionate already about just losing the licensing, if we we're told, okay, cool, no more physical. All right, cool, lower the price. Nope. Okay, we have we got a problem now. We have a problem. So, so here's two things. Here's two things I'll say in 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 regards to that. If 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 this happens, and the newest and Tekken, what what are we at now? What's what's the newest Tekken? I'll let you. One guess. number. I'll let you guess. What are we? Eight at? nine. What? Take a guess. Ten. Take a guess. I don't fucking know. Take a guess, David. Whatever. If we get to if we get to this future <laughs> and Tekken it's eight and okay and Tekken nine comes out, yeah. And they say, hey, no physical release, seventy dollars. RJ, you're still buying Tekken nine. Probably not. I guarantee. I guarantee. You Eventually, you will buy yes. I guarantee you will buy Tekken nine. Eventually, I guarantee. At some, Especially, I will at some point own it. Yes. So but, you'll buy, but it. not day, maybe not day one, maybe, maybe not, not day maybe one, not, but you'll buy not it. until it's half off. What if they don't ever go half off? Okay, that's ins- okay. Come on, let's be ridiculous. Let's not be. Let's not be dumb. I mean, they, I mean, let's they, not what, be dumb. What I'm saying is, if is Steam can do I, it, so can Sony. As consumers go, we will still buy the games. 
uh, for, for the full price, for the price of $70. I don't think that they'll go up from that if they go full digitally. I don't think they will. Um, but we'll, as a consumer base, we are now used to paying $70 for games, for the ability to play games, whether that's physically or not. Most gamers are buying these games and we're not selling them anymore because most gamers are buying digitally now. Um, and we expect that. What what I will also say, and and you know, you know me and my 3D chess moves. I think just more companies are going to go to the streaming model, uh, either either because they're bought by Microsoft, <laughs> or because they they do what we're seeing in in the um, you know show and and movie market where. You know, these companies are just making their own streaming platforms and selling the rights to their their games on the streaming platforms. So instead of buying seventy dollars for a game, you know, you spend a hundred and forty dollars and you have, you know, all of Ubisoft's library up for streaming, you know, for a year. Or, you know, all of whoever's, you know, I think that eventually Nintendo is going to have a streaming service for their games. You know, Sony will is working Sony on those. Has has their, Sony has one. It's just not that great. They're working on it, and it'll get better. Hopefully. And Microsoft will continue to just buy up everything else under the moon. Um, and and we'll get that way, too. I So I just, I think that as a consumer base, we're just already there. We're already doing the actions that these companies want to see done to justify their move to all digital. Um, and I just don't think enough of the consumer base would revolt against that. Um, Until there's a power outage. And then, I mean, and there's, then, if, there's a, if there's a fucking power outage, you're not playing your fucking PlayStation anyway. That's the point. That's the point I'm making. Like, if there's a power outage, then you can't do anything anymore. You have a, basically a brick in your in your living room. But what I'm saying, you mean an internet outage is what you mean. Yeah. Or like, yeah, what, what, just, whatever prevents you from... Outage. Well, because of the power is out, the internet's probably out too. But so is your fucking system and, and TV, RJ. Yeah, so you can't do anything. Okay, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you what do you power your tv by your good vibes rj i got a candle don't worry about it <laughs> answer your potato, power i got my i got my potato board back there it's fucking my potato tv is powering my whole house <laughs> ah. oh, oh i'm supposed okay, to have, anyway. and i'm supposed to have a degree oh man uh sorry uh, yeah, i did anyway. mean strictly an internet outage i am terribly Thank sorry you. i hope i hope yes. please please do not roast me please <laughs> <laughs> yes if there's an internet outage yes that sucks but you know and it's and, and, and again it'll suck for the people that don't have internet and there is a shocking amount of people in the united states that does not have reliable you know fast speed internet um but and and again this is coming from just the cynical capitalist knowing david um those people aren't buying that many games anyway so they they unfortunately don't factor into the to the arithmetics of this decision for companies. we could talk more because there's i can also i mean to add on to your comment to add on what you're saying to make it even more valid because there's a lot of studies going on with our with our generation who are buying well beyond their means because we're nihilistic as fuck and we're just like well if everyone's telling me the world sucks anyways who cares i'll just buy all my games i don't care who cares who cares we're yep. all gonna die anyways it's not <laughs> idea, whatever i can't i can barely afford my house anyway whatever fuck it i'll just buy Tekken eight seven times which by the way it only feeds into the capitalist society you're just making the millionaires richer and you poor stop fucking your Fucking finances. Sorry. <laughs> not the, the socialist. Came dating. for the games. Stay for the socialism. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, that's going to wrap up today's podcast today. Uh, kind of all over the place, but I hope you guys had a good time. Um, keep your eyes peeled like a m month or so. You, there will be some other platinum video. I don't know what it is yet. 
I'm drop, trying to drop get down, down in the crew. comments what you think RJ, RJ said. I mean, platinum. people have already been saying they and they, then he'll you know. ignore you and <laughs> platinum some game that's been out for 15 years. Okay, buddy. All right. Wait, does it, <laughs> has it even been a platinum? Okay, so it's 2004. No, 2014. And then that's 10. And then there's a nine. Maybe. There might be some games that have been out for 15 years that have a platinum, I think. Yeah, because platinum started in 08. So that's 16 years. I, there could so be, you're saying there's there, a chance. There actually, you actually could be right. There could be a game from 09 that I have not played or platinumed, and I can get a platinum for it. Yeah, that's that. you are you are right. There is. I wonder what, what came from 09 that had trophies. Anyway, guys, we love you. Thanks for joining us. Oh. Go give Sorry. go give RJ's new platinum <laughs> video love if you haven't. Uh, share it with your friends. Share it, share it with your awesome. monkeys, and we'll see you guys next time. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>